Lumen, Crumlin and Kimmage is a community project in the Dublin City Council area. Unfortunately, Crumlin and Kimmage historically have been depicted negatively in media reports. But through the positive actions taken by the group, local residents and organisations, outsiders are now getting the chance to see the real Crumlin and Kimmage, where community spirit and cohesion are in abundance. Bloom and Crumlin and Kimmage started out in late 2018 as a project by Crumlin Community Cleanup, which primarily focuses on cleaning and litter action. There was no organised voice or residence groups in Crumlin, but now there are 150 volunteers involved who complete approximately 100 volunteer hours per week. Our volunteers range in age from 3 to 83, and we have volunteers hailing from over 30 counties. Bloom and Crumlin and Kimmage is now run with the cooperation of different local groups, organisations, schools and businesses, all with shared objectives. The groups include Crumlin Community Cleanup, Bloom and Crumlin, Blarney Park Community Gardens, several local resident groups, schools, disability groups, businesses, youth and senior organisations. The collective aim of the group is to enable every resident in the Crumlin and Kimmage area to take ownership of the shared community environment and to work towards its constant improvement in line with the values of sustainability democracy and inclusiveness. Projects are having a huge impact on the local community and the positivity is spreading throughout the area. I think Crumlin Community Cleanup coming as it did without any assistance from the authorities, for want of a better term, uh, has been a fantastic success in bringing people together as well as clear, clearly the physical evidence is there that the community looks cleaner we don't see as much litter. Uh, but I think more importantly is, is that some of the objectives originally, I think, of the people who, who set it up uh, have been able to grow it in, in, into a genuine, real community project that very interestingly, for the first time, probably has brought the different type of residents in Crumlin together. The traditional people who maybe are a second tour generation in some cases, almost like myself, uh, and those who have moved in in, the, in recent times but from a variety of backgrounds. And that, that's a remarkable thing, bring a community that hadn't been organised together uh, together with objectives. My name is Ian Riley and I'm the proprietor of Delhi Licious here behind you with my wife Suzanne. Uh, we've been a uh, proprietor of this business here for over 20 years and we've seen so many different things coming into Crumlin Village over that 20 years and when I got to know the Crumlin Cleanup Group over the last two years and I've seen the benefits that they've had for this village and this is pre-lockdown that the, the, I see them walking tirelessly around the local area, the local roads, cleaning up multiple bags. Couldn't believe the amount of multiple bags of refuse and rubbish that was being taken from the village. And I'm an early starter every morning myself. or here for five every morning. And I've seen the groups going around gathering at their own time, making such a difference to the place. And then when we when pre-lockdown, when we come back and the outdoor areas needs to be developed, we put our own plant pots and so on um, ourselves. And then with the with the Crumlin uh, Cleanup Group, we got some planters from them. And then to see them arriving, watering, tendering, looking after them, was just unreal. And my business, thank God, now since, since lockdown has been gone from strength to strength. And I believe that it's to do with the village being so clean, it's so, so really looked after and loved. And not only saying that, but the diversity of people coming to this village from outside of the village and commenting on how clean it looks, how it looks after it is, even going as far as porches and houses in this village. And I just feel that a, a, a Crumlin Community Cleanup Group is such a benefit for this area. It's just unreal. And as I said, I've been here for 20 years, seeing businesses come and going, and I just can't give a big thumbs up to this group. They're just fantastic guys. The majority of the work that Bloom and Crumlin and Kimmage undertake is focused on positive climate action, artistic and cultural projects. Some of the projects undertaken in the last year fall into the following key categories. Litter action, planting and growing projects, active travel promotion, climate action, community surveys and submissions, cultural heritage and artistic projects. So let's have a look at some of the key projects that we've completed. We created 
a litter action group that has monthly litter meetings with local groups, councillors and DCC staff with an aim to reduce litter pollution in the area. This is an innovative approach to target litter issues in the area through resident and local authority partnership. Some of our successes include over 60 cleanups completed with an average of 70 bags collected each week, removing approximately 4,000 bags a year from the streets. Additionally, we have reported to the council more than 500 large items that have been illegally dumped. We've also adopted 28 litter hotspots to monitor them for illegal dumping. We've had 40 new bins installed in the area based on research completed on the current bin stock in the area. We've audited over 200 utility boxes in the area and graded each one based on level of graffiti and vandalism. We've worked with businesses and schools to assist them in taking care of their premises. We delivered 1,500 leaflets to educate residents on dumping food waste. We got funds allocated from DCC to look at creative ways to enhance litter hotspots. There has been great buy-in from the community in trying to solve the litter issues. We have stakeholders from all aspects of the community involved. We have carried out a large number of planting and growing projects, visited schools to hold classes, planted trees and held workshops and events. This has happened in private, public and community gardens like Blarney Park. Due to COVID restrictions, we were unable to plant on council land for several months, so we have had to look at innovative ways to plant on private grounds such as schools and residence gardens. Some successes during the year included an audit of green infrastructure, including 79 green spaces, 5,000 trees and 108 streets mapped digitally. 40 planters, newly installed and regularly maintained by our adopted planter volunteers. Over 20,000 pollinator bulbs planted, large areas of wildflowers and hanging baskets installed outside local shops. We've held planting and food growing classes and 12 classes in a local school. We've had eight greening community surveys completed involving 3,000 households and 400 businesses. We've planted forests in three local schools. We created a micro community garden in a residence garden. We created the community orchard by purchasing 120 fruit trees and distributing them to residents with a further 180 apple trees to be added in autumn. We also developed a greening strategy to increase public greenery, improve green spaces, enhance biodiversity and enhance streets. We distributed sunflower seeds to residents and schools and held a sunflower competition. We worked closely with DCC Parks Department and councillors to develop a plan for tree, wildflower and bulb planting in the area. Well, we're here in uh, Blarney Park Community Garden and Allotments and uh, this, if you go back 10 years ago, this was an area of uh, severe social, um, anti-social activity. Uh, Dublin City Council took the, uh, the initiative to, to create a, uh, a traditional allotment uh, here. It's a very small constrained area and a lot of work has been done over the years by a small group of people to bring it to its present state. However, in recent times we have looked again at the resources of this area and we find uh, the we're on the banks of the Poddle here and what we did was to do a survey on, uh, funded by the local authority um, uh, the uh, River uh, Waters um, uh, community program and what we did we, we uh, did an ecological survey and we discovered that we're sitting on a unique urban nature reserve. We have here in this area already identified about 40 species of mammals and birds and so we, on, on our doorstep here within the community and available to the community here is an amazing resource that can be shared. Working with D12 Bike Bus and Crumlin Community Cycles, we hold weekly events to promote safe cycling and advocate for safe cycling infrastructure in the area. The D12 Bike Bus was the first bike bus in Ireland and increased the number of kids to cycle to school. Volunteers from around the community act as marshals for the bike bus and the group are working with DCC and SDCC to install safe cycle infrastructure along the school route. Crumlin Community Cycles is a fortnightly family-friendly cycle around Crumlin and surrounding areas. The aim is to encourage people to try cycling and to provide opportunities for cyclists to socialise while enjoying the scenic views around Crumlin and Kimmage. Crumlin is one of 14 locations selected nationwide for a €2 million Euro fund. Three workshops have occurred with local residents to capture their thoughts on what the funds could be spent on. We worked with DCC Arts Office, Kodema, Caro and the DCC Climate Officer to submit an application. The Creative Ireland Climate Action Fund aims to have creative artists work with local communities to bring about meaningful behavioural change in relation to climate action. The submission aims to co-design a series of events between residents, local businesses and local authorities that helps create the submission. Learn more at crumlincreativeclimateaction.ie 
Crumlin Community Cleanup launched the Crumlin Circular Economy Campaign in partnership with Dublin City Council with funding from the Community Foundation for Ireland in association with the Environmental Protection Agency. The aim of the campaign is to raise awareness around the concept of the circular economy, a regenerative way of looking at the world that encourages people to waste less and reuse more. It consists of a number of suggested actions that have been installed in local bins, as well as a social media campaign that highlights the 17 sustainable actions you can take in the local area. Check out the actions you can take at crumlincommunitycleanup.ie forward slash circular dash economy. We wanted to ensure that the community was always able to partake and give their opinions on the local environment. It became apparent that many people don't use social media and for this reason we created questionnaires and surveys which have been distributed to local residents' houses. We also held Zoom meetings and online questionnaires to capture people's feedback. Crumlin and Kimmage has a long history of artistic excellence, including artists like Brendan Behan, Christy Brown and Phil Lynott. We have undertaken a number of artistic and heritage projects throughout the year. My Home is Crumlin is a 10 minute documentary that gives a voice to teenagers who are growing up in a part of the city that is generally considered underprivileged. Crumlin lacks greenery, inspirational public spaces and creative hubs and we wanted to hear more from young people about how they felt about it and what their hopes for the future is. This, this is Crumlin. The, the buzz when the bell, bell goes and you break out of school. I want, want to arm our road and alone in couples or fine groups. Walking through, through the village to send our our connection. The real will really come together and we're known and respected. Strolling into the house I was one of the busiest places because cream makes us 60 cents for a small on our faces. Heading up to Stanoy to hang around the park, chilling in good weather, staying there till after dark. Always a friend there, boy. Friends live close. Heading to the brew when there's nothing to do. Youth leaders warn us about getting wrapped up in drugs. Owen Tick, getting shot. Young innocent boys acting hard when they're not. No time for lighting fires. Born daylight, buzzing with the gang. Kicking ball, cracking jokes, getting along with kids and old folks. We hibernate in winter. Rosary, writing and rules. Until summer kicks in, then we become big groups and the fun begins. Going on a float, cycling down the road, all around Crumlin and every other postcard. Every street full of adventure, the end of childhood games, and the form of new tribes with their own nicknames. This, this is Crumlin, this, this is our home. Young, young and old, no one, one is alone. alone. For the Loretta School laneway, we transformed what was once a grim laneway into a bright colourful area that would give a warm welcoming feeling to the children on the approach to the school. We received the paint from the local Fleetwood paint shop for free and local volunteers painted the mural. We have worked with a local street art group, DCC, and the local creche to transform the grey creche wall into a bright mural. We have created a large website about the history of the puddle using 250 old news articles. We have also worked with artists and DCC to introduce murals onto a number of electrical boxes in the area. We actively seek partnerships with local groups, businesses and organisations in our area. We work closely with DCC, councillors and other agencies. There has been a complete transformation of the area through our litter, environmental, public engagement and enhancement projects. On a social level, the group has managed to bring together such a wide and diverse range of people that has fostered a real sense of belonging, connection and agency. Now let's hear a little bit more from some of our community partners. Here in the school we wanted to build on was outdoor learning um, and bringing the children outside and creating positive kind of learning experiences for them outside. And that was something that they were had loads of ideas, um, you know, and they definitely kind of spurred us on and enthused us to, to carry on and, and, and start something with them. Um, with their help, of course, <laughs> that was really important because I think schools are so busy and teachers, you know, have, uh, have lots of things to do. But it, it was nice that they were there to support us and to kind of set us up, so to speak. Michelle came along um, from Br Br Bloom and Crumlin and she kind of introduced a few ideas to myself um, and thought it might be a nice. I had shown her the garden that we have out there and uh, we kind of exchanged ideas and she thought of a really nice idea um, about growing some potatoes. So she embarked on that and she came in every week, um, spoke to the children about, you know, how this was the process that, 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 that was going to uh, kind of unfold over the, the following weeks. And um, yeah, they were delighted, the children, uh, for the next kind of six, 
six to seven weeks they they grew potatoes and they're out in the garden um digging weeds and uh, all sorts of uh, activity based learning and yeah they really enjoyed it they loved it yeah so we um linked up with uh Crumlin cleaner about this time last year to help develop our um pocket forest here in the school uh, particularly our uh, transition years linked up and did a lot of work with the with the volunteers from Crumlin. Um, I think they really benefited from support and advice that they got. Our, our students really um, enjoyed getting their hands dirty, getting involved in uh, biodiversity and working with uh, people who really have an interest in um, the environment and diversity and nature and so on. I think they're, they're hugely beneficial because first of all, it gets people in the community working together. It gets them focused on a common goal. Um, something that they can work towards to make their local area look better, uh, operate better and basically have a, a more uh, benefit for wider society. And there's also benefits then from linking up with local schools because it gets teenagers thinking about biodiversity issues, na natural issues, environmental issues from a young age for something that they might continue to study in the future or be involved in in some shape or form. We actively promote positive actions, images and events in the area via newsletters, newspaper articles and social media. We have a mailing list of 900 local residents and businesses and communicate with them through digital campaigns. Through all the positive work we can see more opportunities being targeted by local and state agencies. Two recent examples are the Clean Up Group opened the Dublin Community Clean Up Day with the Lord Mayor and Olympian Emer Lamb which was shown on national press and TV. The Arts Office picked Crumlin as a location for the outdoor festival called Hillside involving circus, music acts and theatre. This was the first time an event of this magnitude was run in the area. We have already highlighted some of the innovative projects like the Circular Economy, Community Surveys, Litter Action Group, My Home is Crumlin Documentary and Crumlin Creative Climate Action Project. However, during the pandemic we made a huge effort to continue to operate our projects and work in a safe way. Prior to the pandemic, we held weekly litter picking events that would start and finish at a central meetup point. In response to lockdown restrictions, we set up a drop-off point for the bags and dropped equipment individually to people's homes prior to the cleanup day. This allowed us to maintain weekly cleanups throughout the COVID-19 crisis. This became so popular that we added a second litter drop-off point in Lower Crumlin. We held socially distanced planting events where we provided materials and instructions and allowed volunteers to renew some of the 40 planters located around the area. Many of our volunteers themselves experienced social isolation and disconnection throughout the pandemic. Our group continued to look for ways to lift up its members, checking in with each other regularly, encouraging our volunteers to keep enjoying what they're doing in a socially safe and distanced way. Let's hear from some of our volunteers. I think they're doing a great job. Uh, I don't know what the place would be like if they didn't do it. Um, and then not only that, the social aspect of it, meeting up with them. Uh, they've really got me through the pandemic, being able to come out and say hello and hi. And um, Although I don't pick up, as you say, I'm in a wheelchair. So Although some people in wheelchairs do, but uh, I just protect the rubbish. Uh, so... Um, no, it's been a great, it's been great. Uh, they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, my wife passed away eight years ago and I, I wasn't doing anything, uh, no interest in anything, whatever. And then I heard about the, uh, the Crumlin Community Volunteers and I'm not a thought of a person would join anything. But anyway, I joined and it was the best thing I ever done. I joined there, what, two years ago? And uh, it's been magic, just lovely people, uh, great social life. I feel a sense of achievement, just to know I'm doing something for the community, and uh, that's really it. First of all, I'd like to say that in the pandemic, the pandemic it was fantastic, because when we had the two kilometre restriction, it was very difficult, obviously, for everybody. I'm lucky I live by a park, so I used to go to the park every day. But it meant that, you know, I've got friends in Dublin that I did not see for a number of months because, for example, one of my best friends, she lives on the north side. Um, so one of the things about the pandemic was, one, it kind of gave you a focus for the, um, for the week. I was actually unemployed for three months and then I started working online. But it gave you a sort of social contact meeting on a Saturday. And one of the things I like about uh, cleaning up litter is, uh, is that, you know, it's something which is where you have this sense of, a, of a, 
achievement, if you like, because you've got this big blue bag full of rubbish and then we all meet together. And um, I've been living in Dublin, uh, not Dublin, sorry, Crumlin for just over three years. And so it meant that I started to get to know people around Crumlin. I mean, everybody says that, but I think it, that was very important. The future of viability of our initiative is extremely positive and strong. We have a number of community projects already funded and being planned, have been awarded a number of grants and have been promised additional funding from local businesses. Our current sponsors include Patagonia, Fleetwood, BAM Ireland, Capital Credit Union and Canada Life, with 24 smaller local companies also supporting our initiative. Organisationally, we have never been stronger. We have 150 volunteers and a diverse committee of 15. We hold regular meetings and harness the skills of volunteers to communicate, develop and implement projects. We receive additional administrative support from local resident groups, schools and organisations. We are currently working with our volunteers in a three-year strategic plan. Thanks for watching and we are delighted and proud to be part of the IPB Pride of Place. I would like to thank IPB Insurance and Cooperation Ireland and the judges for putting so much time and effort into such an innovative and exciting competition.